let's talk about UV mapping. So I'm going to come up here and in Windows, I'm going to go to General Editors, Content Browser. If you're on a Mac, Content Browser is going to be located down here. So I'm just going to go to Content Browser, or I think if you're in My 2023, it might be down here too. I'm not sure. Um, if I go to Content Browser, I want to make sure that I'm on Examples. So up here, I'm going to go to Examples, and then on Examples, I'm going to go to Modeling, Sculpting Based message, Meshes, Bipeds, and then I have some bipeds. I'm going to drag a couple out here. I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to grab the male right here, uh, this one here. And I'm just going to kind of talk about some differences, OK? Um, but before I do that, let's talk about kind of what a UV map is. And then I'm going to show how to do it. So if I, um, I'm here, if I go over here to the workspace, I'm going to go to UV editing. And when I do that, it should set me up. Um, if it doesn't, I'm going to just click on the UV editor right there. Um, and this technically should have been the um, UV toolkit, but here it is modeling. Uh, no, let me see. Yeah, UV toolkit right there. Now we kind of have everything we need, but let's kind of talk about this and see what this is. So I can see that if I select on this character, this is the layout here. If I select this character, here's the layout here. Um, but basically what a UV layout is, is a two-dimensional representation of the 3D object, okay? So for example, if I click on this character, if I go over here, right click and hold, and go to UV shell, I can see that that's his head, that's his leg, his arm, his torso, etc. okay? And if I colored on here, let's say if I put, um, imagine if I open this up in Photoshop and this was like a document, and I put a tattoo, I just colored something that said, I love Maya right here. Well, that would show up on the character right here because it's an exact relationship of the 3D represented in the 2D version here, okay? Um, now, what I can do is I can right click, go to UV shell, and I can select these and I can move them around, okay? I could also, uh, using my move, scale, and rotate, I could also rotate the shells and I can go W, E, and R, and I could scale them as well. Okay, so W, E, and R. So these tools will allow us to kind of move around in here. But not everything is going to be started. I mean, it's not going to have a UV layout like that. So we're going to kind of look at how to create that. Um, but I just kind of wanted you to get set up with just kind of some basic navigation tips. So I'm going to um, destroy these UVs. So if I go like this, um, I'm going to select this character and I can see that this is kind of my final product. That's kind of what I want. And if I go like this, I'm going to go to face mode, select all the faces, and I'm going to go to UV planar. That'll kind of, it'll make it look all nice and clean, but it's really not, um, you know, that's not what we want. It basically just sewed everything together and now we can cut it up. And if yours looks different, it just means that the planar options were set to a different plane. So you can see that if I choose something else, it'll look different. Okay. Um, and it actually, depending on if these things are checked or not, I mean, it might look different. It might look significantly different, but again, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to kind of zoom out here and move this over. Okay. But before I do that, I should just point out something. See this, this checkered area right here? If I zoom out, um, it's the small quadrant right in the lower left-hand corner. That's where I'm going to put everything. And when I zoom in, I can kind of see it there. But I feel like I'm going to use all this other space just kind of as my work area. That'll make more sense in a second. I'm going to turn off that. And I'm just going to push my character out of that quadrant area for now because this is um, not, again, the final product that I want. It's just kind of a starting point. I'm just going to go like this and just get this back to kind of how it started. There we go. And um, again, not that it really matters, but you'll see in a second why I did that. Now, what I was gonna say is this. If I select an edge here, and that's how we're gonna cut, if I go to edge, I can see that it's orange, and I can see that these characters are also orange. So I feel like the easier, easier thing to do would be to grab both of them, 
a cyan favorite material, Lambert, and now they're gray. I think it'll just be easier to see our cuts. And you'll notice that the UV map disappeared. It's only gonna show for the selected character. Okay, if I select both characters, it's gonna show both UV maps at the same time. So now that I have um, this, let's say if I wanted to cut off the character's arm. Well, on this character here, and I'm gonna just kind of destroy his UV map for a second. Okay, if I wanted to like cut his arm, I might go like this and you can see that well, it's gonna be kind of annoying. I have to kind of click one at a time because the edge flow might not be appropriate or very good. And you can see that this is kind of annoying because if I double click on this, that edge goes all the way around like that. Or let's say if I wanted to cut off the head, I could click on that one, but then I have to kind of like follow this around here. And then I'm like, well, where's that going? And then you can kind of see what a mess it is, okay, to select that loop around the head. So that's why I like this character over here, because if I want to select on the arm, I can just double click and it selects around the arm. Double click, it selects around the neck. Um, so this one, I feel like I like the edge flow a lot better. And if you want to create your own edge flow, let's say if your character has sloppy edge flow, you could retopologize. And I have a video on how to do retopology, but I feel like let's assume you have a good topologized character and now we're ready for UV mapping. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this guy. We don't need him. And I'm just gonna UV map this character. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start by um, turning my symmetry on. And I do that by going to this arrow and I'm gonna go to object X. And now when I click on one side, if I double click, I can see that it selected the corresponding edge. So you can see I double click on the shoulders and when I have that selected, I'm gonna to go to modify, or I'm sorry, cut and sew, cut. Now, if I right click and go to UV shell, I can grab that, go to my move and move it down and I can see that it's physically cut off the 2D model. I do wanna point out that it is not physically disconnected from here. It's only disconnected in the 2D version. Okay, and I can see that there's a thick white line indicating that where it's been cut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the head. So I'll select this, I'll go to cut. And I always like to select the shell and move it to make sure that it physically disconnected on the 2D model. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to break this down into simpler kind of pieces that it could be laid flat. So now I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna double click on the legs and I'm gonna to go to Cut. Again, UV shell. Aha, there we go. Um, now I'm gonna cut off the hands. Cut. UV shell. There we go. And the, the feet. And if it stops, that means that I have to kind of help it um, go around because it has to make a decision. It doesn't know if it wants to go down here down here, up there, or there. So I'm gonna say shift, double click, and it's gonna help that edge loop go all the way around. I'll cut. Okay, cool, there we go. So I've got this into some pieces, but I feel like it's still not um, laid flat, okay? And again, that'll make more sense in a second. So I'm gonna take this um, torso and I wanna cut down the side but if I select this edge, notice how it goes through the legs, it goes through the feet, it goes through the arms and all that. So here's kind of a cool trick. I'm gonna select this torso and move it up here, way up here. Now, if I select this edge, I wanna deselect the edge anywhere it's not on the torso. So I could control click, control and drag over this area. And what I did by control dragging, it's going to deselect everything except for the torso. So now I can cut on that, and now it's cut, okay? And now, again, since I cut it, if I right click, go to UV shell, I'm trying to separate the front and the back, and you can see that I can't. And the reason that I can't is because it's still connected. It's still connected up here. So I'm gonna go from this white line, shift select, like that, and I'm gonna cut that, 
I'm going to also make sure that it's cut down here, and it is. So now I should be able to select that. Aha, I've got the front and the back of it. Okay, now if I look at the checker, so if I click on this, this is the checker box, I can see that on the side, the checker is not very good, but on the front, it looks good. So what the checker is telling us is how good the resolution is and how much distortion there is. So if the checkers are stretched, that means that no matter what we do in um, when we add our texture, the texture is not going to be able to be supported in those areas. It's, it, it's going to be stretched. So what I need to do is I need to lay these pieces flat. So I'm going to right click, go to UV shell, select this shell. And then if I go to modify, unfold, it should be able to lay flat. Okay. I, I want you to picture this as kind of like a basketball. And if you cut a basketball in half, and then if you pushed on one half and you pushed it down, it's laying it flat. Okay, so when we unfold it, it's kind of like we're taking the three-dimensional shape and we're pushing it down laying flat. So I can see that the checkers now look good even on the side. Back here, this is still, we'll kind of picture this rounded like a basketball. And then I'll go to modify, unfold, and it's gonna lay flat. And I can rotate it to kind of get it in an angle. Or, or in line, and I can see how the checkers look good. It's kind of annoying to see the checkers here, so I could just I could turn off the picture here, and I still see the checkers here. Or I can click on the checkers, and it'll turn the checkers off. Okay, so I've got kind of two shells: the front of the torso and the back of the torso. Um, and now I just kind of need to continue that process. Now for the head, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again take I'm going to go from this edge. And I'm going to go all the way to the forehead, like shift double click right here. And I can see it's going to cut from there to here. So that's going to be a seam, just like any of the other seams that I'm putting in. But I'm thinking that if this character had hair, this would be a strategic place to hide the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And now I can select UV shell, I can select this and modify unfold. Okay, I should mention that if your unfold is not working properly, that if I go to modify, unfold options, you'll know it's working properly if you see unfold 3D and legacy, okay? If you scroll all the way to the top and you're like, you don't see this stuff happening, what you need to do is you need to go into window, settings preferences, plugin manager, then scroll down to unfold 3D and make sure that it's loaded and auto loaded then it'll be able to unfold properly, okay? So I just unfolded the head and I can see that the checkers look pretty good. Now, granted, there might be some kind of weird distortion. I feel like the only way that I could get rid of that is maybe cut the head in totally in half, but then I have a seam. So I'm kind of weighing the um, idea of minimal seams and uh, the least amount of distortion. So let's go ahead and continue on. Um, for the legs, I'm going to unfold those. And for that, I'm going to go from this edge, go all the way down, shift double click on this one. And now if I cut that, now this should be able to unfold. So if I select this, again, modify, unfold, there it is. And if I bring this up here, you can see that I can't really select one without selecting the other. I have to turn object X off. Now I'm able to select one and then I can move and rotate. And then I can select the other one, move and rotate. And I'm just kind of organizing it just so I can kind of keep my head on straight on where everything is located. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the arms. So this is a cylinder, so I would need to go from here to here to establish where I want the seam to be. And the reason that I'm picking on the inside of the arm is because that's gonna be less visible than the outside. So I'm gonna to go to cut, and then I'm gonna select, whoop, and I should have symmetry back on. There we go. Now I can go to cut, and I should be able to select these shells and unfold them. Okay, excellent. Um, now for the feet, here's kind of a different approach. I'm gonna turn off the grid so I can see here. Instead of me trying to select each kind of edge going around here, it'd be kind of annoying. Another method that I can do is I can go into face mode 
And then I can hold down tab and select the faces. So I'm going to select the faces just on the bottom of the feet like this. And then I'm going to hold down shift and add to my selection. There we go. And now I have everything selected just on the bottom of the feet. So instead of me kind of manually drawing that edge, I just select it on the bottom of the feet. And if I go to UV planar, it doesn't matter what that the result looks like. You can see it looks kind of weird here, but you can see that it cut off on the border of my selection. So it was kind of easier to just select the faces instead of the border. Now I can take that and I can go to modify, unfold, and we're good again. Okay, I'm gonna use that same method on the hands. But before I do that, I'm gonna look at the top of the feet here. So I can see that this is the shell for the top of the feet. I can go to modify, unfold. Okay, cool. Now if I come over to the hands, I'm gonna go into face mode. I'm gonna select this. Press F to frame up on it to kind of reestablish my camera. And now I can hold down tab and I'm going to drag select over the inside of the fingers and the palm. And again, I think this is faster than kind of uh, selecting all the edges. So I'm just kind of selecting that and I'm kind of dividing it, you know, the front or the top of the hand versus the palm side of the hand. And when I have that selected, UV planar map. That'll rip it off and have a nice seam around there. Again, I don't really care what it looks like because I can go to Modify, Unfold. And the hands are going to look a little funky, but that's correct. I'm going to select this side, Modify, Unfold, and then there we go. Now I can kind of make this window a little bit bigger and kind of organize this a little bit better. So here's my feet. And again, maybe I'll turn off Object X so I can kind of move this. And I can say, okay, this is the foot, this is the foot. And remember, these were the arms, so I'm just gonna kind of make sense of that. Here's the hands. And I feel like it's kind of good etiquette to have a layout that, you know, somebody could look at and, and kind of make sense of. There we go. And here's some bottom of the feet. Okay. And maybe this is, maybe I can kind of cheat the head to be a little bigger. Okay, excellent. So you can see how I have all these shells laid out. And if I want to know if the sh if I did a good job, if I look at the checkers, and if the checkers are readable, okay, if they look good, in other words, they're not stretched, I can see, for example, they kind of are stretched on the back of the feet. So I could relieve some tension. And by the way, I could select on here as well. So let's say if I select it back here, like right here, I'm just going to object X, and watch what happens if I cut that. So I cut it, nothing will happen yet. But if I turn on the checkers, I can see how they're a little distorted trying to keep this shape flat. But if I select these, and if I go to modify, unfold, you can see that it cut release some tension there and you can see how the checkers look better now okay the checkers don't have to be aligned on the seams but the checkers just have to try to stay square so i feel like that's what our goal is every time and then also you can see that the checkers on the bottom of the feet are a lot uh smaller so if i take the feet and if i scale them down to be about the right the same size as the other checkers that's going to tell me that relatively you know relative to the other objects it's a similar size um that all objects are you know the the correct size relative to one another so i feel like that's what i want then eventually because that would be equal resolution then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all of this and move it back to our quadrant so i'm going to find these blue lines and where they intersect and i'm going to put this right in this little quadrant right here and I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I want to fit this in as absolute tight jam-packed as possible. Because if I go like this, if it's sitting in there like this, yes, that's all in that quadrant, but I'm wasting a lot of potential resolution. So, or detail. 
So if I make this bigger, something like that, and maybe I compromise even my organization because I feel like having this all fit is going to be super um, important. So maybe I go like this and maybe I move these, you know, kind of vertical. And maybe I would even want this to be tighter than this, but I feel like, uh, you know, hopefully this is just kind of enough to give you some idea of what, um, you know, UV mapping is all about. Let me make these a little bigger. Aha, there we go. And and I want to make sure that none of the UV shells are going outside the lines there. So I want to make sure that they stay within their boundaries. Okay. I also want to make sure that no UV map is overlapping another UV shell or I should say UV shell. And then if I click on this second button right here, this is going to be um, telling me if the shell is flipped the correct way. So if it's blue, that means it's the correct way. Let's say if I took this shell, and if I go to modify flip, I can see that it's red. That indicates that it's backwards, okay, or flipped, it's, it's reversed. So if I go modify flip, now it's facing the right way. So a good example of that would be, let's say on this one here, let's say if this was flipped, okay? And then if you um, if you put a tattoo on the character, and let's say you open this up in Photoshop and you painted a tattoo that said, I love um, UV mapping, okay? And that tattoo showed up right here. Because this is backwards, that means that the tattoo, even though you wrote it the correct way here, would show up backwards right here, okay? So a lot of times what people do instead of just checkers is have like checkers that have like an alphabet or something along those lines that, um, you know, numbers, so you can kind of tell the um, if, if the shells are backwards or not. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to go to modify, flip. And there we go. If you don't like the default just checker that um, Maya provides, um, what I did is I made a file and I call this the extreme UV check. And you can see that it's, well, it's color coded, it's got letters, it's got arrows. And um, so if you were interested in something like that, what you could do is this. Um, instead of having this weird, just kind of generic texture, I could go like this. I can um, assign a new material to this character and I'm gonna choose Lambert. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the right. Okay, all of this stuff is history. So I could go to edit, delete by type history. And then under here for color, I'm gonna go to file. I'm gonna go click on the folder. And then I'm gonna go find the extreme UV check. Here it is. And now if I press six, I have it like this, okay? Now you can see it looks pretty big, but if I wanted to repeat this, you'll see that in the UV check area, there's a place 2D texture tab. If I click on that, I can go to the repeat and I'll do something like 10 and 10. It's gonna repeat it 10 and 10. And now I can really start to see um, where that is. If that's too big, I can go like five and five. Okay, and um, now what this is, it's showing me kind of the directionality of the shells, okay? So the arrows, I can see that um, if the arrows are all pointing in the same direction, that means that the shells are all kind of in line with one another. Why that would be important is that if you had like wood grain on your character or something, um, if a shell was flipped the wrong way like this, I can see that the directionality is, is different. So the directionality is this way, then the directionality is that way. It would be kind of hard to get that um, wood grain to all kind of coordinate. So um, I can also see this. Because I have letters on here, if I take this shell and flip it, I can see that that is backwards. 
right? I can see that it is backwards um, because the letters are on there. So I would know that that shell, even if I had no kind of visual clue here, I would know that I would need to flip it. And now I can see it correct. So I feel like that um, extreme UV check is can be really helpful um, into seeing if your layout is good or bad. And by the way, if you attach it to color and you're like, wait, how do I get to the spot where I would um, have it repeat? You can go like this. You can go to color and then you can go to this first one, file out color. And then you're going to be in this area where you can repeat it. And if you wanted to get back, you could just click on this and it's going to bring you back to this area here. So hopefully that was helpful. If you like this, you know, put a thumbs up, subscribe and get more videos like this each and every week. So hopefully, uh, again, that you enjoyed this, put a message in the comments below and let me know what you thought. All right. Thank you.